Uh, all right, hello everyone. Uh, you might know me from my channel, which would be the case if you're watching this on my channel. I am Amy, Shira Title from Vintage Space. Uh, cheers to uh, to you. I guess oh. I'll let you introduce your own self now. <laughs> hello, Amy. So glad to have you here. I am so glad to have you here. And uh, yes, I'm Scott Manley, in case you hadn't know, and I didn't know, and I am not an astronaut, but I play one on the internet. <laughs> we have Kerbal Space Program here, and you, with all your amazing history of uh, space knowledge stuff, have some real interesting corners which you are going to challenge me with. I think today we're going to challenge you to go to Mars as per Warner Fun Brown in the 1950s. To Yay! Mars? <laughs> So I show a three-stage rocket here with a little mini third stage, I guess. But basically this thing, this thing is insane, right? It's something like 5,000 tons with 50 engines and then 22 engines on the second stage and then five engines in the third stage. This is what I've got. And it uses, you know, because cryogenic liquid oxygen was the fuel of the future, no, they're all about nitric acid and uh, hydrazine. So basically an environmental nightmare and yes. pretty much toxic to anyone nearby. Yep. And it has wings on it as well. Yes, because you need to reuse that glider so that you can launch oh. it multiple, multiple times to build your space station before you go to Mars. So it has to land. Did you reuse the first stage as well? Yes, yes, they did. You so can you can you do that? I've got to fill up on very important fuel here. This is uh, you know golden state of mind from Ale Industries. It is a beer made during a hop shortage, and so they use tea instead. The uh, I found this because it looked pretty today. Uh, fluctuate whiskey inspired by craft beer. It's also quite delicious. I've also oh. I've also had a decent amount of it, so. <laughs> and you're not going to be doing the flying, so you can really get toasted. <laughs> it I don't have to be right? sober. I just have to tell you what to do. Yes. Well, I'm going to start with that first stage or that final stage, not the first stage. Yeah. Because, you know, well, how hard could it be? Actually, I should just forget about the second stage and go and see if I can make this thing fly it's, because yeah. therein, therein lies danger. Yes. Right? Yes. We are going to have this thing probably falling out of the sky. So first of all, we need to switch to uh, symmetry mode and we get two of them. It's got, no. you've got, so you, it's got two wings at, towards the top and two much larger wings towards the bottom of the stage. Like the yeah. wings insert almost level with the engines, which looking at a, a drawing of it right now feels like a scary spot to have wings. And hope for the least number of explosions or at least the most entertaining kind of explosions. Do you have... How does the tailplane set up on these? Is it like a tail here, or do we have tailplanes on each wing? There are, there are little like, I don't know I what the right word for it is. Like little, yeah, little like uppy. Okay, here's little here's how things. I'm not. Here's how I'm not an engineer. Especially, should we like? Can we preface this by saying it's nine thirty at night and I've been up since six and words are not my strong suit. So if your wing is like this, it's got little uppy bits like this okay, so <laughs> on top of the like wing. Mini tails. They're like mini we'll tails. Do... They're about halfway yeah. down the only on the big wings though, the bottom wings halfway down yeah. and they they're like three quarters and they extend about a quarter beyond the wing. Does that, that look convincing? Sense. That that does actually. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna do that. And then what we also need to now think about it is I think actual they're control. only looking at pictures, I think they're only on the upper what I imagine is the upper portion of the wing. Uh, relative okay, to right. the pilot's uh, pilot's canopy. <laughs> this is great too, because I've never successfully built 
anything with wings and Kerbal. So I've never, I didn't even know you could do this. This is awesome. <laughs> it is actually way harder to build things with wings than it is to build rockets. See, rockets can kind of fly just through their sheer power. Yeah. Whereas anything with wings requires an understanding of aerodynamics. You know, you can make, oh, you can make uh, a brick fly with enough rocket power, right? Right, yeah. But making something fly with wings, you have to kind of think about what you're doing. Oh, look at that. I mean, Truly Von Braun. I mean, I know you're a professional effectively at this, but like, I'm amazed. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, you're not uh -oh. doing that. You're not making, oh, that's not good. That's not. That's so not what's good. happening here is the center of lift is in front of the center of mass, and that makes it aerodynamically unstable. Oof. And it's a. Uh, yeah. oh, oh. Well, we didn't kill anyone. <gasps> oh yay! Yeah, there I is get a, really a... attached to them. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Flip backwards. Bleak. So all I'm doing is I'm moving these wings backwards. So the be, the reason is that the there's too much weight and um wait a second there's too much weight back here and too much lift so i can just grab these wings and slide them back and that should make the thing a little more stable and now we maybe know why fun brown's wings are awkwardly directly next to the engines well i was reading and apparently the design that we kind of know about is in part designed by a cartoon artist from Disney because his designs were a little more practical. Hmm. And the Disney designer decided, wanted to make it look a little more, you know, what's like the word? Like crowd-pleasing? Crowd-pleasing, yes. <laughs> There's and some so, more, more artistry involved than just straight-up yeah. engineering. Okay, no, it is still Ooh. not liking that. That's not awesome. You know what? Oh! Oh my god. Oh, oh. Wow. How are they not dead? Good on you guys. The, you Cheers, know, boys. Science. Science. I'm going to actually see if this is stable after I burned all the fuel. But I'm also going to shift these wings back a little further. It's these big ones. Maybe if I scale these wings down a little, uh, not quite that much. The, the big I, ones? Okay. No, the ones at the front, if I, they're a little. So you know, I think uh, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn. Um, they are quite small in the drawing. So are they too big that they're generating too much lift for the thrust that's at the rear? Right. Uh, uh, so the, the center of mass. If we huh. bring this up, center of mass Don't is you... like right there. Right. And the center of lift is in front of it. So there. That is our problem. Oh. Sorry, I'm leaning so away from the mic so I can see in the screen. <laughs> yeah. You know, in uh, aviation and spacecraft design and everything, it's quite common that they have to put, like, ballast in the things to keep it stable. Yeah, look at this. I have to move that way forward. Okay, I'm going to take these and just we move could, them back. We could double up and, like, fill it with water as ballast and then release it into the ionosphere with, like, Project High Water because science, right? Yeah, we could. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a happy place. <laughs> this is a happy place. Let's go to the happy place. Oh, that's Ooh. less of a happy place. Ah. It's still, still a bit unstable. And that that really is a bad sign. Okay. These... Can I ask a question that's maybe a dumb question, but I'll preface this by saying I am not the engineer here. Is it yes. going to make a difference that we're only going to be flying this thing in the upper atmosphere? Well, we eventually have to land I guess it, we do have here's, to land here's it. the thing, right? Notice how I have burned fuel and it is now a lot yeah. more stable. Yeah. So Except that if it's we sideways. land this thing How on is it flying tape, sideways? No, just because I'm turning so I can try and aim for the runway, oh. you know? So I've now got it back under control because I have... Um, oh, wait a second. Where's the gear? There we go. We're going to try and land it on the <laughs> runway here. See this? Oh my god. So the beautiful thing is that because I've burned the fuel, I moved the center of mass. Right. And by right. moving the center of mass, it became stable again. So it's unstable. Okay, now oh I my need god, to it's really fast. play. Ooh. Okay, I kind of <laughs> did it a little hard. Still. A little hard, he says, is there's just 
fire issuing from the space plane. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it was survived a, and our carbon It was survived. a dead stick landing. That was, I mean, for a dead stick landing, like, good on you. <laughs> yeah. And I stopped on the runway in plenty of time. Yep. And the crew is fine. I need a number from you. Yeah. How many engines in the second stage? The second stage. So we're counting the, so that's, yeah, okay. It's the middle stage 22. of the moon rocket. 22 main propulsion 22. rocket motors. Okay, what's the layout? Are they laid out in rings? They're, they or? look to be, let me see if I can find a better image. They look to be honeycomb-esque. Honeycomb-esque. Okay, yeah. So, they're like so um, it looks like they're sort of lines, like they're rows. So they're okay. like here, and then they're sort of like, they're spaced so that it's like, they're here and then they're kind of offset from the other state, from the other ones, and then they're back so it forms a honeycomb. Okay, how's this looking in terms of proportions? Let's zoom out a bit. It, uh... I could use it, a bigger, this stage could be bigger down here, I think. Let's just try and yeah, fit 22 I mean, engines on this thing. I think if we then go from there and just continue the, the line of that onto the first stage, it'll, it'll look good. It'll look like a Frankensteinian monster, but it'll look good. Wow, is Frankensteinian <laughs> an adjective? It is in, cool. It is now. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's 22 Lots. engines. And there it is. It can manage wow. one G, which is enough. That looks pretty cool, That actually, actually. looks amazing. Okay, there is... now we need to get that first stage. Okay. I'm getting excited! <laughs> I have no idea if I have enough Delta V, um, that's the only thing. Should we talk about retro rockets? You mean for landing this thing? Yeah, for deorbit. I didn't think about uh, that. Is we, it, can we use this, mate, the rockets on this for deorbiting. We we'll just turn use... the thing around for now. Yeah, okay. Ooh, I like blue. Oh, that looks awesome. Well, let, let's keep What's... it with blue for now. Let's just make it blue. Is that... <laughs> how many engines is that? Uh, so that's uh, three groups of eight, so 24. You math, Holy. you math 51. I, I, I do math. There's so many engines. There's so many <laughs> engines. Again, we're not sure this will get off the ground, so I'm gonna save it and we're, I'm actually gonna put this on like a launch structure to hold it still. Yeah, that's- Because it will probably crush these poor engines under the weight of the fuel. Yeah. The Von Braun proposal was over 5,000 tons. That is... That was just to get to 5,000 tons. How, do you, how, what was the Saturn V's weight? 3,000. 3,000, okay. So I love that you know that I'm talking about. Almost twice as... Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, do we need to think about, and I don't know if the system actually had it off the top of my head, but hold down arms to let it build up no. thrust, or are we just going to like... Yeah, I think we're just going to go... For lack of a real word. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to go with the thing, but we will have to add wings. Let's see if this works. Ugh. Ooh. No, not quite as expected. <laughs> oh, it's just on fire. Are the two first and second, are they all, what is happening? I can't even tell. The window's like tiny it's, on my screen. Like, what is happening right now? It is, uh, it is uh, trying. falling over very it is slowly. Trying. Oh. And they're still alive. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the the uh, the whole rocket exploded and then they were showered with a storm of rocket nozzles. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's really really funny. <laughs> I love I love the idea that your rocket explodes. It's mostly intact, but all of your rocket nozzles just kind of like pepper the area. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's be clear, they would have been covered in nitric acid and hydrazine. So in so uh they, they'd be dead. You know, um, I believe the Russians called this kind of combination the Devil's Venom. Awesome? Yeah. Okay, let's try this. Let's, I've shrunk it down, put it on a diet. Maybe it will get airborne. Change these so I'm, I found a couple of versions of this that looks like they have wings on that bottom stage. Is Would that help it, or would that just make it worse? Oh, we absolutely need it, wings on this bottom stage. And I suspect we need a big pair of wings here. Yeah. And maybe smaller pair of wings it, here. The images I'm seeing have two large wings at the bottom. Just, okay. just the two. Um, oh, wait. Hang on. Note four. Okay. Four. four. Weird angles. Yeah, fins. 
uh, as a... Uh, we have fins. Fins. Finish. Basically fins, but like they're massive fins. Um, like that size of fins? I gotta uh, Skype. Uh, maybe not quite that massive. They're not dwarfing in these images. They are not dwarfing the upper fin, the upper wings. Okay, so a little bit bigger than the big wings on the upper stage has that for vague, vague direction. That is that is suitably vague, <laughs> and I will endeavor to take your design specifications and turn it into a flying vehicle. Ah, yay! There you go. That I still. Those are too. I think those are too small. How do those look? I'm going to say that looks pretty cool regardless. It looks pretty cool. It looks way too big. But, it uh, looks way too big? Yeah. Oh, but I like the look of those. Just fins. Yes. Uh, as I, I, I learned. It's never just fins. <laughs> as I learned, I think it was Jim Lovell who mentioned at a Apollo 13 event that fins were Von Braun's trademark. So can't not have fins. Well, it, Von Braun was working in an era when uh, he needed them, right? And the Saturn V had them because they weren't sure, but in the end, the flight computer was capable of handling it. And so mm -hmm. the next generation of Saturn V wouldn't have the fins, but of course, they never. There was got no that next far. generation. There was no, but they had it. They had it designed. Oh, it's still not right. Come on. I don't, I don't there's even know, like, it's just, there's just so much stage. fire, like, going up the rocket right now. Really, I did the math on Von Braun's engines, and they're actually a lot more powerful than I expected. So, he might have been very optimistic with his math on this. <laughs> also, he was pretty optimistic with his timetable, but whatever. That's so many about. engines. Yes. Oh my god, I'm just, like, I love the line down the side of the screen of just, like, yep. Yep, that's all those engines. Oh, and we're losing control. Ah, uh, why? You see, we need bigger wings here. You were telling me those uh, wings I were too small. I told you the wings had to be bigger. No, yeah, I believe that if you look to the recording. <laughs> Not the big, big ones. I mean, try it with the big, big ones. Maybe I'm wrong. No, the but... big, big ones will be awesome. But I, I will definitely, I'll make these bigger, right? Uh, and you know what, I think oh, I'm the definitely... other two, so I didn't notice that the, they should all four be big. Oh, okay, so we'll make yeah. them all big. So let's I don't know do if, I don't know if that's going to make enough of a difference to losing well, control or not. You know what, what will make a difference is just making them bigger. Okay. L longer and with bigger at the root. Just increasing the control surface area. Right. It can only lead to good things. This is a monster. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Soviets built the NK-33 for their N-1 rocket, yeah. which uh, was the best thrust-to-mass ratio of any rocket it was insane. until the, the Merlin. But it also had amazing uh, specific impulse. But there's interesting history, and I don't know, I need to go through this and like make a map of how it worked, and maybe you know offhand, because you never forget anything you hear or read, um, <laughs> but like different design bureaus, right? Like it's not the same oh, as the God, way NASA yes. has um, centers that all work together that do different things. Like there are different design bureaus with different chiefs at the heads doing different things. And the thing with the N1 rocket was that um, they wanted, I, I I can't remember, it, got, it transferred to so many people, but at some point it ended up under Korolev. But um, I think it was Korolev then that wanted bigger engines for it, but the, the guy running the bureau that had the technology to build bigger engines said, I can build you your engines, but I don't want to work on the M1 rocket, I want to build this rocket. And I think he wanted to do, do nuclear propulsion with these rockets. Uh, and Glushko Korolev, was, yeah. was it Glushko? I can't remember the names off the top of my head. I'd honestly, I'd need to double check my notes on that. but. Because And then Kurlov was like, I'm not using something that's that scary. I want to use this fuel. And he's like, well, then I'm not building you a rocket engine, so you have to go with this guy. And this guy was like, well, we only have the, uh, was it, what was the engine called? Not the N1. That's the rocket. The, the R NK-33. NK-33. So he's like, well, we have this. We can't make it any better. We don't know how to make it bigger and more powerful, but we can just shove a bunch more of them to give you the extra lift that you want. Because the, N the N1 was not designed initially as a moon rocket. It was designed as a heavy lift 
to orbit vehicle. And then when it <laughs> yeah. was suddenly repurposed for a moon rocket, that's when they had to add more engines to give it more thrust to actually launch something heavy enough to go to the moon off the planet in the first place. It's really interesting. The stories yeah. behind that, the way that structure, the structure of the Soviet program works so differently from NASA's is a really, it's, I just need to, I need a map. I just need to map it one day. It's right. so, it's crazy when you look at the infighting. Like, you think the infighting well, of, like, U.S. The military is bad? <laughs> <laughs> Right, I mean, the, the Navy versus the Army and Von Braun. And yeah, all that. and the Air Force trying to eck out its little spot with its own rockets that are also derived basically from German engineering. It's just like, whew. <laughs> but it was, a uh, so Glushko was the guy that uh, Korolev wanted to build the engines okay. for the N1, but Glushko was basically saying, no, we can't do this using, uh, you know, liquid oxygen and rp yeah. sorry and kerosene he was yeah. absolutely not going to do it unless he could use hypergolics um, right okay probably did not want to put any person on a rocket which was using hypergolic fuel right because, right you know hey scary dissolving flesh kind of problems <laughs> right that's uh, literally what happens it's yeah. just like scary oh, dissolving flesh kinds of problems yeah pretty much um yeah and then I forget, I forget what happened. I, I did this in my in my N1 blog post a few weeks ago, but yeah, when Korolev died and then the N1 was transferred to another design bureau and somebody had to take it over even though they didn't want it and it was all kind of a an interesting was disaster in that way. It was it mission it was mis mission or mission, mission, yeah. mission, yeah. Um but did he take over the one that pre predated uh, OKB one? I mean, that he was basically bureau. Korolev's next he, yeah, he's, in line, but more didn't, or less. But wasn't the N1 then transferred to a different design bureau? Or was it that OKB1 uh, OK merged with Energia and then formed another design bureau that took that over as heritage technology and then it just became sort of like the rocket that no one really knew what to do with or wanted to because it ultimately ended up that it was this is impressive by the way i've been yammering and not watching this but you're doing good there <laughs> i think my problem is my ascent is too vertical oh and i'm scared to actually let this thing go because as soon as i let it go the aerodynamics are going to kick in and it's going to how high are, are you not 25 kilometers right now. I know it's still Did high enough we... that aerodynamics is going to be important. There's, there's no, um, there's no like thrust control system, reaction control there, system on that, is there? There is no reaction control system. There's no, uh, not reaction control. There is no thrust vectoring on these engines. Because uh, I, according to the post I read, no thrust vectoring. So I'm just going to let this get down to about. 30 degrees and then I'm going to fire up the engine again. There we go. There. Now and I'm telling it to hold attitude. Okay. And so now most of this uh, control authority is actually coming from Computer? this cockpit. Yeah. Oh ah! dear. Ah! <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah. That's not good. I'm not happy. <laughs> you're not happy. Well, you know, you have no right to be happy. Right? <laughs> Given how terribly I'm doing this. Okay. I'm going to try and oh, get it back no. on course. I have Delta V to spare. Right. There we go. And let but my Apple apps get up to about 100 kilometers. <laughs> and we totally did it. No, well, actually, we totally haven't done it yet, but... We, uh, oh, wrong button. But we will uh, get into orbit now because we have control and we have tons of delta. We have like, two, we have enough delta V to go to the moon because of Kerbalness. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I was going to remark do you know about the British Interplanetary Society's moon landing design from the 1930s? Um, I know of it, but I right. have not read anything specific about it. So you can I tell me details and I will not know much. Well, it was just you were commenting about, uh, you know, things that people thought might make sense at the time and, yeah. of course, turned out to be bogus. And one of the things that they had was their design included a heat shield for ascending through the atmosphere at great speed, <laughs> but did not include a heat shield for returning. Oh, no! Really? <laughs> Really? I, I love that design. It's so insane on that's, so many levels. That's such an interesting thing to have it be... 
Let's a heat just shield. That. Was that? I mean, was that by design, or was that just yeah, like? Yeah, that was ah. a design. Their design was like, well, we're gonna be traveling through the atmosphere at great speed. Therefore, we need to protect the. But you know, did the they not think that we will be traveling at through the atmosphere at great speed, coming back down again? I don't know. You know, these Weird. guys. They uh, they were not really. They were looking with the big picture. Oh, oh, we're spinning. Uh, this would be the worst re-entry right here. This would be pretty close to the worst re-entry, This would be like yes. na Nausea Central right now. Um, <laughs> I don't I'm know. I'm sure did... Joe Angle could handle it. Yes. If, if anybody could handle it, it would hands down be Joe Angle. Um, Jude. Uh, <laughs> could I, I, could it get... Trick. Could it get so hot that the friction somehow burns through and ignites the remaining yes. fuel? Yes, things can explode and catch fire and whatever. Mm. So. Oh my god! Oh my look, god! It's stressing me out! Well. No! Like, whoa! <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. I think I think I'm gonna be able to recover this if I don't. If you it. recover this, I'll be pretty impressed. Now I'm going only Mach four. I'm much more survivable. Uh, I might have to land on the, the desert, though. I guess I the mean, goal. So are we going to say that uh, success is living, living, who, who do we have here? Jeb and Bill? Jeb and Bill. They Jeb and Bill. put Valentina in there because, you know, we need to represent everyone. But I Yeah. Do you, you know the story about, was it, who's the guy that was in the X-15 on the test stand that exploded? Scott Crossfield. And the, the, the yeah. headline, you know, wet pants. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what was stories. the, yeah, they, um, they were just firing the engine and somehow like the engine exploded and it's like the cockpit shot forward and everybody yeah. thought he was going to be on fire and then they doused him. Just the well, they, they, they doused, doused him in water. Anyway. They, yeah. But yeah, it was, that, if, how did, was that, did that end up being the headline? I, I, he was phoned, but he was contacted by some news people and it was Yeah, it's, well, it the only like, problem is my pants are wet. Yeah. <laughs> Survives <laughs> explosion, wets pants. Yeah. <laughs> the time he taxied a plane through a wall. <laughs> that's a that's a really good story. It was like I forget what I think it was like the X two. Like it was it was like an insane multiple like you know past Mach 1 flight, all kinds of crazy good piloting, and then he taxis and he's like, I've got this, and he goes right through a wall. Yeah. <laughs> then there's, yeah, his first ever flight when he landed with one bare foot in the X-1. That's another oh, really good one. Yeah. He, uh, the, the windshield iced over and he had to like, scratch out a little spot. I'm sorry, I, I'm very distracted watching this now. Oh my god, you're okay. really, really I, fast. I have got How are I've you going learned. this? How fast How are you going? going? I'm it's only so going fast. 115 meters per second. I don't. Now I just need. Now I just need to flare it just right, and then apply the brakes. So the problem is that the ground isn't perfectly flat. So this is like landing on yep. a lake bed that's had waves yeah. on it. Oh. 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 Okay. We lost the wings. We lost the lower wings. But to be fair. You did tell me those wings weren't in the original design. So actually, we've made it more <laughs> faithful to Von Braun's design. Ah, well played. That's awesome. <laughs> there. Mostly success. I, I like how Jeb's really excited by this. Yes. He's always victory. so excited. That's why I kind of love Jeb. <laughs> this it's is going to be face. magnificent. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, that was good. How far from Hulk? Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Slanche, slanche. It's <laughs> amazing. Jubilee. Oh. Oh, man. Look, we got him out as well. <gasps> he's here. Oh. Oh, don't fall. Don't fall, buddy. Oh, he's going to totally jump. Hey, oh, buddy. He oh, he's so top heavy with that head. <laughs> yes, they are. What's up, dude? Look They're at so it. He cute. Is a true hero. <laughs> I love these guys. I had a total blast shooting this video with Scott Manley, he's so much fun, and those of you who know him know that he is great at the nitty gritty details of Kerbal Space Program. So if you do want to know more about the decisions he made in building his Von Brown Ferry and all the little game things that he did, be sure to check out his video, and if you just want to see more Kerbal videos, definitely head over to his channel and see all the cool stuff he's put up there. 
And Scott and I are talking about maybe doing more of these collabs when we have time. What missions would you guys like to see us do in Kerbal with some commentary from Vintage Space? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course any questions or other random topics that you would like to see covered in future episodes on the channel. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram for daily Vintage Space content and with new episodes going up every single week, subscribe right here so you don't miss anything fun.